Hello, boys and girls. Today is Monday, November 2nd. And for some of you, this is your very first day having school at home. And I had a chance to do a live Zoom meeting here just a little bit ago, and I got to see some of you. Um, for those of you who didn't make it, I'm glad that you're here now and can watch this. We will be doing a live Zoom meeting every day so that you can see your friends and your teachers and we can talk to you. And we'll be doing our lessons from our computers, just like we do every day here at school. And then I'll also be meeting with you individually so we can have our own time to talk and catch up. So just like in the morning when we come to school, after we come up from breakfast, we come to the, the room here and we all sit on the carpet and we go over our morning routine. We have circle time. So because we're on the computer today, I'm going to carry my computer around the room so you can see these are what we normally look at here. And so ever since I started here in Irwin, our color was always the same color. It was black. But this week it changed. And this word starts with oh, oh, oh. Can anybody tell me what that word is? Orange. Can you think of something that's the color orange? Pumpkins. We just had Halloween. And the shape of the week has also changed. So this is a shape that has three sides. Does anybody know what shape that is? That is a triangle. Our number of the week has also changed. So last week, the number of the week was three. Does anybody think they know what the number is for this week? Four, very good. Why don't you try holding up four fingers? One, two, three, four, very good. Okay, next, the letter of the week. Does anybody know what letter that is? P, very good, P. And P makes a p, p, p sound. Can you think of any words that start with a p, p, p sound? So I have this here, just like we have at school for you to look at, to try to find some words that have a P sound. So it has p, p, pumpkin, p, p, popcorn, p, p, pizza, p, penny, pale, and is there anything else that we can think of that start with a P? See what you can come up with. Okay, and lastly, our word of the week. This week we have a new word and it is starts with a W, it's we. We are having our first virtual learning experience from home today. So that's basically what we do and then we roll right into our morning activities. So um, for those of you who have been following along or who have been at school, what we've been talking about for the past couple weeks are pets. We talked about different types of pets, where pets live, what pets eat. Now this week we're starting to talk about um, communicating. And I'll explain to you what the word communicating means. But um, the question that I have for you is, do animals talk? Do animals talk? So the word communicate, I'm gonna spell it for you. You hear the word c -c communicate. What letter do we think that that starts with? C communicate. It is a big word. And it starts with the letter C. See if you can say it. Communicate. See if you can break the word communicate into sounds. Communicate. Wow, it has four sounds. Communicate. And that's when you're sharing information with others. So a kind of tricky question I had for some of you are, can we communicate 
without using words. Think about it. Right now, I can't hear you or see you, but you could answer that question without communicating or without using your words. Can we communicate without using words? We can. Do you see how I just did that with my head? Yes, we can. Are we at school today? How are you feeling? You can communicate all sorts of different things without using your words. You can use different gestures and body language. So I want you to pretend that you're angry. How could you show me that you're angry without using your words? To make a mean face or I had somebody growling at me earlier. That would show that you're angry or mad. What if you're happy? What could you do? You could smile or there's a little song. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So I could just clap my hands because I'm happy. So I want you to take a turn now and without using your words, I want you to communicate a way that you're feeling. You can take a picture and send it to me and so I can see how you're feeling. So because animals don't use words like we do to communicate, how can we tell if a pet is hungry or scared, or sleepy, angry or happy? Dogs can't use words, so how can we tell, how can we communicate with them, or how do they communicate to us whenever they're feeling something? So I know for me and my pet, my dog Lily, Lily is scared. She is so afraid of storms when, it, when it's thundering and lightning outside. She does not like it. And so I know that she's scared. She doesn't tell me that she's scared, but she starts shaking because she's so scared that she just starts shaking. And she usually goes upstairs and hides in the closet. She also does that if she hears like fireworks or loud bangs in the background or booms, like that always um, makes her scared. Um, I know what that would, she has to go outside. She will usually come sit right on me and just start crying. And then I ask her and she runs to the door. So we can communicate with each other a little bit and she can do it without using words. Um, so it's important to stay away from an animal that is communicating certain emotions. So I showed this to my other friends. Like a dog like this, if you saw a dog like this in somebody's yard or if you were like going for a walk somewhere and you saw a dog like this, um, if the animal is angry or afraid, it's more dangerous and more likely to protect itself. So this is a dog who is growling and it's showing, it's his way of communicating, stay away. I am not in the mood. I don't want you to come near me. I'm growling at you to communicate to you that I don't want to be bothered. Please leave me alone. So if you would see a dog like this, stay away. They don't want you bothering them. Now on the other side of that, if you had a dog that was nudging you with their, your, their nose or you know, wanting you, they would indicate to you without communicating and using word or without using words, they would communicate to you that they want you to pet them. And this is the same thing. If you saw this cat outside and you tried to go up to it, it did that and it went, <sighs> what do you think that cat's trying to say to you? It doesn't have words, but it's saying, I am not in a good mood. Please stay away from me. And if you don't do that, they're going to try to protect themselves and it could lead to 
things that aren't very nice. Um, and, and so another thing, like people communicate with each other in pets. Well, sometimes if you've ever seen a cat and a dog or two cats or two dogs or, or different animals communicate with each other. So my dogs, when they're communicating, they like to sniff each other. Or if they meet a new friend, they always like want to sniff each other. And that's kind of like them saying, hello, nice to meet you. And so they can communicate with each other that way as well. So that's pretty much all I have for the pet study. Now I do have a book here. Miss um, Donna read it earlier. I'm going to read it to you now. It's called Bear Feels Sick. And I thought this was a good book because a lot of people are getting sick right now. And this book is about friendship and it's about being kind and what you should do. You know, if you have a friend that's, you know, feeling down or, or feeling sick. And how you can kind of deal with your emotions if you're feeling a certain way. Bear feels sick. So if you look at here's the front cover. Bear feels sick and you can see by the cover of the book there's bear and those look like maybe all of bear's friends and it is written by karma wilson and jane chapman so you open the book up you open it this way and you can see here's the first page that looks like there's a bear in a cave Bear Feels Sick by Karma Wilson and illustrated by Jane Chapman. So illustrated means that that is the person who made the pictures in this book. Okay, I'm going to hold it up here so I can see it and then I'll show you the pictures. Alone in his cave as the autumn wind blows. Bear feels achy with a stuffed up nose. Well, I heard two rhyming words there. Did you hear that? Blows and nose. Bear is not feeling good. He tosses and he turns all huddled in a heap. Bear feels tired, but he just can't sleep. He sniffs and he sneezes. He whiffs and he wheezes. And the bear feels sick. What do you do when you don't feel good? I know when I don't feel good, I like to take a nice hot bath or a shower and lay on the couch all snuggled up in a blanket and just relax. I wonder what bear's going to do. His friends gather around. Come out, Bear, and play. Bear shakes his head. I'm too sick today. I just heard two more rhyming words. Play and today. See if you can hear any. Mouse mutters. Oh, my. Bear's head is too hot. Hare says, we will help. He's a warm, cozy spot. So there's the picture of the bear and the hare. Bear and the hare. Bear mumbles and he moans. He grumbles and he groans. And the bear feels sick. Oh, I heard two more. What were they? Moans and gruel. Groans, very good. Okay, mouse squeezes bear tight. He whispers in his ear, you'll be just fine. Your friends are all here, here and here. Badger fetches water, gopher cooks the broth, while moose soothes bear with a cool, wet cloth. Cloth and cloth. They cover Bear up and he drinks from a cup, but he still feels sick. Look at his friends helping him when he doesn't feel good. Those are some nice friends. They build him a little fire over here. Looks like they're all there. They're all there to take care of him, make sure he feels better. 
raven comes. Ah, oh, come along, owl and wren. Let's go gather herbs to bring back to the den. They coax bear to sip just a smidgen of tea. You'll feel better soon, says mouse. Wait and see. We will see. Bear shakes and he shivers. He coughs and he quivers. He still feels sick. Shivers and quivers. This is a good rhyming book. The friends fuss and fret. They cook. The friends cook and care. They keep a close eye on that poor sick bear. Bear and bear. They all talk in whispers. They walk on tippy toes. They sing lullabies. And the bear starts to doze. Finally starting to sleep. They watch bear for hours. We could we've done all we could. Then the bear wakes up. And the bear feels good. That's awesome. Bear feels so much better, and his friends took care of him. What nice friends they are. Bear cries, I'm all better, I'm feeling like new, I'm not hot and achy, it's all thanks to you. Let's celebrate now, let's go out and play, let's jump in the leaves, let's frolic all day. He's so excited. He wants to have a party, a celebration, he's feeling all new. And mouse starts to wheeze and hair starts to sneeze. And the friends, oh, now the friends feel sick. Bear murmurs, don't worry, and tucks them in bed. He bundles them up and kisses each head. Look at that, he got them all bundled up there. He tells all his friends, you'll soon feel like new. You took care of me, now I'll take care of you. You and you. The end. Well, that was a really nice story. So Bear wasn't feeling good and his friends took care of him. And so he wanted to take care of his friends when they were sick. So I thought that was really nice. Um, so the next thing that I have is, so every week in addition to talking about pets, we've been doing some other things. We did a week where we talked about firefighters and fire safety. And last week, our mini lessons were about pumpkins. We did a lot of stuff for pumpkins for Halloween. So this week, we're going to start talking more about community helpers. Now, this doesn't really have to do with that today, but it's just one of those things that I think it would be important to go over with you. So... If you look at, you should have these materials at home. They should be what came home with you. Um, an adult in your house or one of your parents should be able to find them. There is a wheel kind of thing that looks like this. And it says, what can I do? And so it talks about having problems and finding solutions. So I guess we could incorporate that. So if you are having a problem in the community, you would maybe call the firemen or the police and there are people who help the community. So if you have a problem of your own though, how could you deal with it? So uh, I guess the first thing is you have to decide, is it a big problem or is it a little problem or is it maybe a medium problem? And so these are some things that you can do if you have a problem. You can tell them to stop. You can walk away. You can talk it out. Apologize, which means saying, I'm sorry. Go do another activity. So if you're at school and you have a friend that's maybe not being very nice, you could just go to another activity. Um, you could make a deal. 
you let me play with the blue car for five minutes and then I'll let you play with the blue car for five minutes. You could ignore it. So if you have a friend that's not being very nice, just ignore it. Walk away, find somewhere else to go. Um, and then lastly, share and take turns, which most of my friends are very good at that. So there are some steps to solving problems. And we did this the other day in school. We had a big problem. My friends were all yelling at me. And so we, as a class, worked together to figure out how to solve the problem. And so we decided that it's probably best if only one person is talking at a time. And so if the teacher is talking, you have to raise your hand to talk and wait for the teacher to call on you so that there's only one person talking at a time because what happens is everybody starts talking and I can't hear what you're saying. And then it just sounds like you're yelling at me. So we all worked together to, came up, to come up with a solution to that. And we thought it was just a great idea if we just raise our hands to talk and wait for the teacher to call on us. And it seems to be working pretty good. Sometimes our friends need some friendly reminders, but for the most part, we do raise our hand if we have something to say. Um, and so when you're problem solving, here you have to think, what is the problem? How can I fix the problem? Like think about it like, hmm, how can I fix the problem? What could I do? And then you have to look at your options. What would happen if, would it be safe? Would that be fair? How would it make me, how would it make people feel? And then just give it a try and see if it works. And if it doesn't work, then you have to go back to it and visit it again and think of other solutions and try other ways to solve the problem. So these are all in this packet for you. And then um, the last thing, like these are other solutions, like get a teacher, ask nicely, ignore, say please, stop, or say please, play together. Those are just more example things for you to look at. Now the big thing that I wanted to look at with you today is this paper, and it's social problem cards. And so you can help Get, maybe get someone to help you fill this out or if, instead of writing words if you want to color pictures and then explain to somebody what they are so we know so problem solving everybody should do this on their own someone broke your crayon what do you do someone broke your crayon is that a big problem is that a medium problem or is that a, a, a small problem well, I think it's important to consider that if somebody breaks your crayon, that's not nice. But also, nobody's getting hurt, so it's not an emergency. So I don't necessarily think that it would be something we would need the teacher for. But if you are unable and you can't fix it yourself, then you can absolutely get the teacher. So if we're at school or you're at home or wherever and someone breaks your crayon, what do you do? What are some things we could do? See what you can come up with for that. And these, you can fill these out. And again, you can just take a picture and send them to me so I can see um, what you're doing at home. Um, someone cut in front of you in line. Also, it's not hurting anybody. It's not nice, though. And I know sometimes if someone cuts in line, that can lead to maybe pushing not nice things. So again, if it's one of those things and you can't resolve it or fix it by yourself, then you would get a teacher. So if someone cuts in front of you in line, what could you do? You could ask them, please don't cut in front of me in line or, hey, that was my spot in line. You have, like, you have to go to the end of the line. Um, so what if someone is in your personal space? So you're sitting at your spot on the floor or at your desk, and you have someone that's just, like, right here, and they're just right there, and you, you just, you want them out of your bubble. You want them out of your space. What could you do? 
Um, you could just walk away. You could get up and move to a different spot. Maybe walk back and get a book or take a little walk around the room just to kind of get a break. You could ask them to not be so close to you. If you know they're doing it on purpose, you could just ignore them. Um, what about if someone is using a crayon and you want to use it? What could we do? Now, I know my friends at school are really good at this. They share. So if one of my friends has the pink crayon and another one of my friends want to use the pink crayon, crayon usually they will say can I use that when you're done and then they can take turns and share or maybe they'll just wait until they're done with the pink crayon and say well I guess I can use the green crayon and then when they're done with the pink crayon I can use that one so there's different things you can do um, someone is taking the toys you want to use. So at school, when we have playtime, you get to pick your toy. And because of COVID, we have to be pretty strict about how that works. And so a lot of the times we're calling, the teachers are calling friends who are sitting down, listening, following the rules. And those are the friends we're calling to get their toys first. So I know there was an instance just the other day with a friend who got upset because they didn't get the toy they wanted, but they were one of the last people to pick a toy because they would not sit down and stop talking. So if they would have been sitting on their bum and had their listening ears on, they probably would have gotten called. So, I mean, in that situation, you just want to make sure that you're just doing what you're supposed to. If the teacher asks you to sit quietly and wait till your name gets called, if you want a certain toy, that's what you got to do. Um, another thing is you could wait till the next day and be, you know, I'm going to use that toy tomorrow. Tell, make a deal with your friend. Hey, since you got to play with the cars today, do you think I could play with the cars tomorrow? We could trade toys. You could make a deal with them. Um, and the last one is someone talks when you are talking. This goes right back to the problem solving we did here at school. So whenever I'm talking, somebody else was trying to talk and yell over me. And it's just not nice. It just sounds like everybody's yelling. And so as a class, we decided that if we have something to say, that we're going to raise our hand and we're going to wait for the teacher to call on us. It's a classroom rule. It's what's nice. And I've, I have seen some friends say, hey, Raise your hand, like helping their friends, which is really nice too. So, I mean, there's all sorts of different ways that you can, you know, solve problems. Of course, if we're out at the playground and one of your friends falls and they get hurt or they bump their head or something, then you definitely want to get teacher help. Like if it's a big, you know, big thing, then you want to make sure that you get teacher help if it's like a big problem. But some of the other stuff you might be able to work out on your own. Uh, I think that's about it for today. I hope that most of you had a chance to get on and see this. And hopefully you will be on for our live Zoom meeting tomorrow. And I hope to see everybody then. Happy Monday!